There's been a lot of talk in the international scene over one man. Balogun from Stad de Rem. He's on loan from Arsenal, he's been choosing between England and the USA, and today, we're gonna see what happens. As he officially announced he was gonna be playing for the USA, we're gonna do a 10 year sim of Balogun, not just at club level, but we're gonna see how he plays for the USMNT. If you enjoy this style of content, get involved, get around it, wherever you find it, and without further ado, let's have a look at Balogun and see how he goes in this first season. So as you can see, he's 20 years old, 5 foot 10, from USA. I don't know whether it shows it, I don't think it does. I'll try and get a good little look at it for you. But you can see here, 5 foot 10, 150 more pounds from the USA, 3 star skills, 4 star weak foot. We are going to be training him of course, we're going to be following him everywhere he goes from a club and international standpoint and we're going to see how he plays. So once we obviously put him on a training plan, I will let you know and we'll see how this first season goes for it. Like I said, this is his first development plan. We're going to look to get five-star skills nice and early on here. So, that should be very interesting to see how it happens and whether it affects his development or his output at Stad de Rem. He is the highest-rated striker, so that's not a problem on that front. We're unsackable. We're not really going to do anything too out of the blue. But, let's see how he goes in his first season or until he gets called up from the USMNT. Of course, since Balogun is now a member of the USMNT, we're going to be taking him and having Jesse Marsh, who is going to be our manager throughout this whole thing, he's still in this version of the game that I have on GC, we're going to be having Jesse Marsh manage Balogun at both club and international level. So, we're going to accept this job offer, he's a part of the USMNT, he is the manager, that means Balogun is probably more likely to get picked, but so be it, it's good for what Balogun needs, his development, and hopefully he's going to win a few trophies with the USMNT. I'll hopefully come back to you at the end of the first season. A development plan update for our man Balogun, he is... At a 73 overall, midway through the season, and we're going to put him on a complete striker plan, which is hopefully going to get his skill moves, I mean his weak foot, up to 5 star. And then we can work on things like his pace and his shooting, because that is arguably the most important. In a striker, of course, I want him to be the number one for the USMNT. I want him to be the number one wherever he goes. So hopefully, he keeps on growing. We'll check back. Maybe midway through the season or something, I don't know. But otherwise, we'll be back at probably the end of the season. So here we are at the end of Balogun's first season at the club. And it'll be his only season here, I assume, before he goes back to Arsenal to either try and prove himself or get another loan. But they finished 11th in League 1, which is actually pretty impressive. Will still was on track for a similar thing in real life. Let's have a look at the stats of the players which should be quite entertaining. Let's, let's have a look here. Let's have a little look at the goals. Who scored the most goals that wasn't Ekatike, or however you say it. It was Balogun with 13 from 38 games. That is pretty impressive. Only one assist and flips from right mid with 12 and 9. So Balogun did quite well in his debut season in France. Not quite as good as real life, but you've got to remember, this isn't as realistic. He's gone up to a 76 overall though, which I do find quite impressive. But anyway, we're going to get to back at Arsenal and we're going to see what to do with him and see where our next step is. So here he is, back at Arsenal, 78 rated, Bolloran Balogun. We won't be taking the chance, we're going to be sending him out on loan, and if there's a suitable loan to buy, or a suitable loan, we are going to try and accept it, get him a bit more game time. I'll let you know when we actually get our first offer. This offer is an offer I actually like and get my head around. You can see we rejected two offers from bigger clubs, but we're going to delegate this, and we're going to hopefully 
give Balagun a one year with that option. So that'll be what happens. We're gonna come back if we get the job. If we don't, I'll let you know when a more suitable job comes along. Looks like we've got our move. It's not PSV like I envisioned. Loan to buy fell through on that. But Balagun has secured a move to AFC Bournemouth. Two year loan for Balagun. Arsenal are paying his wage. And I think personally, this could be a good step for our man Balagun. Obviously, he is still going to be a part of the USMNT and whatnot. But let's see how his season goes at Bournemouth. It's easy to see why Bournemouth put in a two year loan move for Balagun. This is the squad we've inherited. He should fit in quite well. He is the highest rated striker by quite a distance. The goal, of course, is to just keep Bournemouth in the Prem. We're not going to make any signings. This isn't a Bournemouth or a club rebuild. This is a Balogun career sim. So our goal, really, is just to see how we perform and whether or not Balogun will actually shine in the Prem like he did in League One to an extent last season. Anyway, let's check back in after the end of the season. While I'm simulating this, I should probably mention a few things. I'll throw this in somewhere. First of all, Bournemouth were in the championship, so that didn't really help with Balogun at all. Second of all, some reason, I don't know why, whether it was an injury, whether it was just the AI being the AI, but Antoine Semenyo got the games over Balogun. So Balogun left six months into a two-year loan, which isn't ideal if you think about it because he could have been used to pull us up back to the Prem and then go from there. So we're going to go to the end of the championship season. We're going to see if he gets a move. And then if not, well, I'll probably just release him and see where he goes because I don't want him to be at Arsenal. He's stuck behind Gabriel Jesus. He's stuck behind whoever else. So we're going to go to the end of the season and see what happens. And I'll come back when we have found him probably a new club. So now we are at Leicester City, which is an interesting move in itself, one would think. He joined on a free from Arsenal, I was going to release him anyway, so he's ended up at Leicester. We're playing him in a two-striker formation with Patson Daka because I can't be bothered to release him. But, yeah, this is the formation we're going to play. Hopefully he plays a lot, unlike last season. Hopefully he can get some good European experience, because Leicester finished sixth, so surely they're in something. But... Yeah, we'll check back at the end of the season and we'll see how he did. So thankfully, in his first season as a Fox, he actually was able to score 18 goals, which is four less than Harvey Barnes, but let's be honest, it's better than nothing. He did also get himself four assists, so he did outperform Pats and Dacker to an extent, which is nice to know. But let's have a look at how Leicester did in the competitions. So standings, they finished 13th in the Prem. For that squad, that's pretty surprising. IMO. Let's have a look where they finish in the Cups. I don't expect them to have done that well in the Cups. It looks like they got knocked out relatively early. You won't bother, really. Carabao Cup, they got knocked out in the same sort of fashion, it looks like. We're gonna ignore all of these. I think we went to the Conference League. So we made it all the way to the semis, and we lost to Atalanta on pens. And they're currently playing in the final against AZ Alkmaar, who lost to West Ham overnight when you're watching this. But, yeah, overall, Balogun's first season as a Fox was quite good. He's got one more season before the World Cup comes around, the 2026 World Cup in the US, Canada, and Mexico. Let's see how he performs with Leicester to try and get himself on that plane to the World Cup with the USMNT. Well, lads, we did make the World Cup, of course, with the USA. We've taken over as the manager. We're going to simulate the World Cup and see how it goes. This will probably be the last thing we do. We're going to see if Balogun he has gone full circle in his choice to play for the USMNT. But let's have a look at some of the other results. Leicester actually got relegated, which is quite sad. They got relegated by six points from Watford, which is annoying. Any cup runs? We clearly didn't make it very far in any of these. And do we make it far in the Carabao? The answer is probably no again. Yeah, it looks like another no. So, yeah, that's 
that's from an individual standpoint. Let's have a look, and let me just switch this really quick. Squad up. We are going to have a look at the stats and the, you know, the goals and assists for the season. So goals, of course, went to Balogun with 20 from 40 games. We did quite well. 19 in the Prem and the sole one in the Carabao. But overall, Balogun actually did quite well. I'll bring you back for the first match of the USMNT at the 2026 World Cup. So here you see the lineup of the USMNT against Ukraine. Ukraine wouldn't normally qualify for this, but I think because there aren't enough proper teams in FIFA, they've made it in. So let's see. We've got a very strong lineup. That midfield, that defense, that attack, one of the best that could possibly be sent out. And let's have a look. We quick sim and we beat Ukraine. That is actually quite good in regards to the standings. So this is arguably our biggest test. Portugal with the likes of Ramos, Silva still kicking around, Conceição, Liao, Fernandes, Vitinha, even Ruben Diaz is still kicking around at the back. Let's see how we go. Quick sim against Portugal. Can we beat them? And we do! We actually managed to pull off the win against Portugal. That puts us unbeaten at the top of our group with a match to play against an opponent. Oh, I forget. I think it's Hungary. So this match against Hungary is... Or oh, Morocco, not Hungary. Why did I think Morocco? The badges look similar. But this against Morocco, who still have a very good core on the side, the likes of... I assume... Not Bono. Hakimi and Nezri Harit. Amrabat, loser. That's what they'll be when they lose this match to the USMNT and they get a draw. But the USMNT have indeed qualified for the round of 16, which is actually quite big given that the circumstances of the situation. Let's, let's stick with this and go into the next round and see how we go. Arguably the biggest match in USMNT history at the World Cup. Round of 16 against Mexico. Let's see what we're working with. USMNT, they've got their usual lineup. Jimenez for Mexico, Vega, Lozano, Osorio, Montes, a lot of the regular faces. Let us see, can we beat Mexico? And we win on pens, the USMNT are going to the World Cup quarterfinals with Balogun leading the line. What a time to be alive. Let's get through and see who our opponent is. And we're playing against Italy. This is the biggest match of the US men's national team. Quarterfinals against Italy. You know a lot of these names, I'm sure. But let's see, can we get the job done against the Azzurri? Let's have a look. And we do not... Udogi and Keane scoring for, it, for Italy and Balogun scoring for the US in the 77th minute, but it was not enough. And that concludes our experiment here of Balogun, his simulation. He didn't do that surprisingly, he only reached like an 81 overall or something, which isn't ideal. I thought he would have had a bit better, but anyway. Let us know what your thoughts are on Balogun, if you've made it this far, and I will catch you all in the next one.